Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be making microvilli and lining them around a tube to create something resembling a small intestine. I promise it looks a lot better than it sounds, so let's get started. Go ahead, grab the default cube, hit X and delete it. From there, we're going to hit Shift A and add in a cylinder. I'm going to tab into edit mode, hit G, Z, hold down control and just move up on my mouse until it snaps here. The reason we did this in edit mode is edit mode will actually impact the pivot point. So instead of being in the center now, it's at the bottom. If you did this in object mode, it would actually leave it in the center. So now that we've got that, we'll tab back into object mode, hit S, Z, and scale up just a little bit. I'm then going to hit S and Shift Z and scale in so that I have something a little bit narrower. From here, I'll tab into edit mode, hit Control R, and add a good number of loop cuts, something just about there. I'll then hit three for face select, grab the top face, O to turn on proportional editing, and the type that I want is actually sharp. From here, I'll hit S and just scale in, rolling up on my mouse wheel if I want that effect to come to a greater or lesser extent. I'm really just looking for something sort of like this. It's not going to be great, but it'll work itself out later on. Right click and shade smooth. So now we have our first villi. This isn't the most interesting thing ever. And so what we wanna do with this is actually tab into edit mode, hit two for edge select, choose any edge that is horizontal, hit alt and hold down alt rather, and click on that edge. Now you can see we've selected an edge. We're going to keep proportional editing enabled, but we're going to change it back to smooth. Then we'll hit G, shift Z, roll that mouse wheel up and just move it sort of left or right until we have something a little bit more interesting. Something like that is fine. We're actually going to make a few different villi because I find that it makes the final look a little bit better. So shift E to duplicate this, Y and drag it over. And again, just you can either keep the same edge selected and move it around a little bit this way, or you could grab a different edge and do it that way. Now, one thing that I should have done at the beginning, but didn't, was you actually want to flare the base of this because when these are going to be put into the particle system, unless you have an incredibly high density of vertices for your particle system, they're not going to necessarily take up the whole area. And so you want them to sort of widen to the base. So what we're going to do is again with edit mode and two for edge select, we'll alt select the bottom and we will actually change back to sharp hit S and Z, and then just roll that mouse wheel down so you want the base to be flared. That's going to be okay because you're not actually going to see it on any of these. So each of these are one of our villi, and I'm going to name them appropriately. Once you have all your villi created, we're going to actually move them to a separate collection. One, two, three, and four. Make sure all of them are selected hit M and choose new collection. And I'll just call this villi. For the time being, we're going to hide that collection and now we'll actually work on creating the tube that is going to be the particle system. So shift A, add in a cylinder. You do not want a cylinder with the generic 32 vertices. So come down to this little panel over here and change 32 to at least 64. It's going to look better the more you have, but it's also going to be a little bit harder for the computer to keep up with. And hopefully we'll actually be able to render it in this video while recording it. So one for front view, zoom in a little bit, tab into edit mode and control R. What we want here is for these to be pretty much square. So I find that 24 cuts is maybe a little bit too many. Let's go with 20. Right click and drop those into place. That looks good. One thing that we should have done was actually delete the top and bottom faces. So hit three for face select, then X and delete faces on both of these. Perfect. From here, we're going to hit R, X, rotate 90 degrees. And then we're going to hit control A, apply that rotation, come to the modifier tab, add a modifier, and we'll start by adding an array. We're going to use relative offset and we'll do that in the Y direction. Make sure you enable merge, add in three for the count, and now we're going to add in a simple Bezier curve. So shift A, curve, Bezier. I'm going to hit seven on my number pad for top view, Z and drag to wireframe. And now I can see that I have this very simple Bezier curve. I'm going to hit R, Z and 90 degrees again, minus 90 degrees actually. 
tab into edit mode, grab this little point on your Bezier curve, hit G and shift Z. We can disable the proportional editing by hitting O. So G and shift Z now, drag it till just about here, then grab this point, G and shift Z again, and drag it until you have something resembling a curve, just a bit of an arc. You'll notice that this is a bit of a rough curve. So the way that we're going to improve that just to make this a bit smoother is come down to the object data properties for the curve and change the resolution preview U from 24 to say 36. And now that is much, much smoother. Now we're going to grab our tube and we will first right click and shade smooth, then come back to the modifier properties and add in a curve modifier. We're going to simply select that Bezier curve and you can see that it is snapped onto that curve. With your tube selected, hit G and Y to move in that direction and just move it until you have basically this kind of angled pass. Now we're going to add the visual interest by adding a displacement modifier, hitting new on texture, coming to this little button over here. So show in texture tab, or you can just come right down here add a clouds texture and bring the size up to about 1.5. We're also going to drop the strength down to about 0.8. And now this is actually the setup that we'll use for creating our particle system. So come to the particle properties, add a new particle system, and we want to know exactly how many villi we need here. So we'll tab into edit mode, hit one for vertices, A to select all of them. We see that we have 1,408 vertices. So obviously we need that number three times over. So here we go, 1408 times three. That will give us this number of particles. We'll tab back into object mode now. And for source, we're going to use verts. We will use the modifier stack and we will uncheck random order. From there, we're coming down to render. For render as, we'll use collection. And the collection that we will use is our villi. So you can see right now, we've got this one little one placed right there, and that's because we are actually on emitter and we should be on hair. Once we switch to the correct type of particle system, now you'll see we have this crazy collection. First of all, our scale is way too big, so we'll drop it by just about half. Next, you'll notice that these are all facing in the wrong direction. So we'll enable advanced, come down to rotation, and we'll change orientation from velocity hair to normal tangent. You see that hasn't fixed anything yet because we actually have to rotate the villi. So make them visible again, select all four, hit R, Y, and let's try rotating by 90 degrees. You can see that hasn't changed anything and that's because first we have to come down to render and we will use object rotation. And now this is the effect that we're going for, but the villi are facing the wrong way. So simply grab them all, hit R, Y again, and we're going to rotate by 180 degrees and they are now facing in the correct direction. So we can just grab them and move them out of the way and zoom in and see what we're dealing with for our villi. Now this obviously looks very chaotic and a little bit busy. So again, we're gonna come back. We're just going to bring that scale down to about 0 0.015. And this is the makings of our tube. So you can see what I was talking about before. If we zoom in, you can see we're not actually fully connecting. We could do that by simply bringing the scale up until they all overlap. And this is actually a case where I think it's fine to have this happen. Normally, I like to avoid overlap in my particle systems, but it's okay in this case. And we're actually going to add to that a little bit by randomizing the rotation ever so slightly. Not a huge amount. You really don't want to see this very obvious clipping, but something very, very subtle, 0.05, will be probably all right. You'll notice as well that we have this kind of ugly looking exterior of all the pieces. So if you wanted to have something a bit smoother, the way you solve that is quite simple. Come to the modifier stack and add a solidify modifier underneath the particle settings and just increase the thickness of that until you see this sort of effect. You won't be able to deal with this edge perfectly, but that's okay because it's not going to be in our final shot. Once we actually have all of our villi set up like this, you can see I'm really not happy with this degree of clipping that I see over here. So I'm actually going to bring that rotation down to zero. And even now there is some degree of clipping that is just going to be a product of having the scale be a bit too big. So something more like this, and now maybe we'll be able to add in some of that rotation again. Yes, I think this is the look that I'm gonna go for. You can see what we're actually after is this sort of internal shot. So coming into this view, hit Control, Alt, and number pad zero, and that will snap your camera into this view. Then I'll grab my camera, hit G, and just sort of move around until I have something 
that I'm a little bit happier with. Something maybe like this. And from here, we can actually zoom in and now get going on the final setup for materials. Most of this look actually comes from the materials. So if you come into material preview mode, and if you're familiar with the videos I do on this channel, you'll know that I often set up everything here and that I like to actually render most things in Eevee. This is a rare exception. I absolutely think this should be rendered in cycles and I'm actually not going to use an HDRI. I will use custom lighting for this one. And we'll start by actually just getting the materials right. So come over to your villi, grab one of them and create a new material. What we're looking for is a sort of red pink color, something just about here will be fine. And we actually want to bring the subsurface value up for just about to just about 0.2. What that's actually doing is creating this sort of semi-complicated concept of the light coming through it and actually being able to see through it. So if you do that thing where you shine a light on the back of part of your skin and you can see through, that's sort of the idea that we're capturing here. We're going to be a little bit lazy here by simply selecting each one of our villi that are still white, then the last one, hitting Control L and linking all of the materials. So now they all have the same material. We don't actually want that, we want them to have different materials. So for each one individually, come and grab this little button here, click it, and it will make the material its own material. And we're going to add some subtle variation to these. We don't want just variation in shape, we also want variation in color. I think it's better to go a little bit more towards a red and less towards a yellow. So don't go too blue, but it's better, I think, to go a little bit in that direction than it is to go towards the yellow direction or just increase the saturation. Again, we'll do that for each one. And you can also vary the subsurf value for the different villi. Something, let's say here. And for this last one, we'll just drop that to about 0.1. And of course, we forgot to unlink those. So now those are exactly the same. So we'll come back to this first one and change it again, back to 0.2. So we now have our four villi in different shapes with all of the colors. If we snap back to our camera view, you can see this is actually not bad. We need to grab our cylinder, which is actually our base, and we'll give it any one of those four materials just so that the background blends in. It doesn't particularly matter which. alt a deselect, and now you can see we've got our scene. This is where it's all going to come together, and we're going to just hit Z and come into rendered view. Now, you can see this is a little bit dark, but we're going to solve that problem with by simply making sure our cursor is still at the world origin, hitting Shift-A and adding in a simple point light. And once that's done, you can see now we really have this look that we're going for. You can change the strength of the light to maybe 20, and if you want, you can actually grab it and move it just a little bit further away from the camera to sort of light up the interior of this. Something more along these lines is pretty good. And you can finesse these materials quite a lot. So if you grabbed any single one of them, usually I find the main things that I'm doing here are increasing the roughness so that it's not quite as shiny looking. So for each one, we'll just move the roughness up to about 0.75. And that's not bad. Now, the last thing that we want to do here is add a little bit of depth of field and use cycles to visualize this because it actually comes out much, much cleaner. And you could add another light if you want to. So for instance, I think it's a little bit dark over here as so well. Grab my point light, shift D, and just bring it to say there. I actually think that's quite interesting as a composition. So we're going to come to the render properties tab, switch our render engine from EV to cycles, and now it'll take a little bit longer to catch up and to actually render. We'll also come to our camera and we'll go to the object data properties for that and add in depth of field. And obviously, as you can tell, this is quite taxing on my computer to do while recording the video. But once you have something that you're reasonably happy with, you can actually get a pretty good result from this and this will give you this sort of micro villi look. If you want to, you could stop here and simply hit render. There's one last thing that I'm going to do that's kind of interesting for animation. If you are going to animate, I recommend still doing it in Eevee rather than cycles. It can be a little bit taxing for my computer, which is by no means bad. Every individual frame of this would take probably 15 minutes to render. So if you do the math on that, it's really just a long time to get this image. Really, I think this is less of a figure and more of a TOC or a promotional image for something if you really wanted to. 
And in other versions of this, I really spend more time finessing the texture to get it to look a little bit better. But we'll come back to Material Preview now, and we'll do the setup for the animation. So grab your cylinder, come to the Modifier Properties tab. We'll actually get rid of the Solidify modifier, and we're simply going to add in a Wave modifier. Now, if I were to press play right now, this would go crazy because the whole tube is waving. What I want is actually for the particle system to move with it. So I'm going to move the wave modifier above the particle system. And again, this is still going to go crazy because all the particles are going to move. I'm going to restrict it to one axis, just X in my case. I'll drop the speed down very, very low. 0 0.05 is roughly what I'm looking for. And I'll also bring the height down to about 0.1. I want this to sort of undulate slowly, not move in a crazy hectic way. We'll hit zero to come back into our camera view and then we'll press play and we'll see we now have this kind of slow moving undulation that is more typical of what you would expect here. And if this was all set up and ready to go, you could render this out as your final scene. Just like that. Now, obviously you can improve this quite a bit more I have done so in other tutorials. Getting into the weeds on all of the material details isn't something I'm going to do here, but if it's something that you're interested in, just let me know in the comments and I may do a follow-up on that. This was a rather long tutorial, but as always, thanks for coming out. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. Hopefully use it to go make some figures, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.